Can everyone rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're gonna start with roll call. Maria Venuto is out, so you get me. Um, <laughs> we're gonna start over here with everyone introducing themselves instead of us calling out everyone's names. So, take it away. Audrey Lynn Hurston James. Megan Levine. Ann Markoulis. Leah Leone. Maureen Jimenez. I'm Angela Ramo, and Maria Venuto is absent. Okay, so let's move on to the approval of the minutes from the reorganization meeting, the regular meeting, and our meeting on the 12th. Can I get a motion? Megan and Anne, any questions? All in favor? Um, six. Okay. We don't have any committee reports. So, Dr. Rihanna, superintendent's report. So, welcome. Um, if anyone has been driving around, they will see that there's a lot of orange tape, yellow tape, and uh, big trucks in many of our schools right now. Uh, we are in the midst of three projects, the beginning of our bond work, the beginning of the um, uh, EPC uh, work that's there, energy performance, and we are also doing mitigation projects. So uh, our assistant superintendent for business along with our director of facilities have been working with FEMA and our insurance companies to ensure that we don't have another um, situation as we did when Tropical Depression Ida hit uh, actually a, two years ago. Okay, um, so they are working on the mitigation project. So there is a lot going on. I thank those in the community that have been using uh, caution as they are uh, entering or uh, exiting any of our parking lots or buildings during that part during the time um, there's going to be construction going on for the next two years um, and if you recall we did present that we do have a page on our website that page is updated as new uh, projects take hold um, so far, those projects are on time, and so we look forward to so many other projects that are occurring. Um, some projects are happening in the building. For example, in the high school, uh, new electricity, new lighting, new uh, ceilings as a result of the energy performance contracts are taking place. You may see people on the roof of the high school or lights on the roof of the high school at night. Uh, that was because they had to take cer certain readings and they had to wait until the roof actually cooled off before they could take those readings. So they're happening uh, pretty much around the clock and will continue to do so as we move forward. Uh, it's very exciting and um, we are taking, making sure that it is closely monitored and we make sure that all of the approvals that have come through for state ed are being addressed appropriately. So, um, exciting time for Glen Cove. Uh, additionally, we have our summer program and um, our students are very enthusiastic each day. Yes, they're going to programs during the summer, whether they are K to eight or obviously at the high school. And uh, we're looking forward to them continuing their attendance and their work. Um, and their smiley faces each day as they arrive. Um, now there was some question about a no harm policy. 
And since we've been getting additional questions from community members, as well as board members, uh, we've decided that we're going to do a brief presentation to explain just how that works. And for that, I am going to introduce our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, Alexa Doshner. Alexa? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Rihanna. Okay. So I wanted to start by presenting what New York State's Department of Education uh, put forth in response to the difficulties that the COVID-19 pandemic posed. So last year, the Board of Regents approved an emergency action plan and this was an expansion of an existing process to make sure that students who could graduate with a lower score on a regent's examination. So before the pandemic, if a high school student scored a 65 and above, they were passing that regents, that specific regents examination. If a student scored below a 65, they were not going to pass. But because New York State recognized the difficulties that our high school students had, not just Glen Cove, but across the state and the nation, they put forth this resolution in terms of allowing um, for our seniors to graduate with a score between a 50 and a 64. So this was termed the special appeal. And this was in place last year, and this was also extended to this year. So this is the final year, the school year of 2022-2023, um, including the August regions of 2023, when a student can graduate high school with scores on the regions between a 50 and a 64. Our original high school grading policy, which is available uh, in our policy manual, states that the final grade of each course at the high school will be calculated by averaging each of the quarterly grades, so each grade that the child gets in their quarters, and the final exam or the region's examination grade. In other words, the final exam or the region's exam represents 20% of the final grade. That is the original Glen Cove High School grading policy that was in place before COVID, and after this year, this policy will go back into effect. In June, the Board of Education of Glen Cove decided to um, accept this resolution whereby we are aligning ourselves to New York State and giving students the same um, flexibility to graduate with scores between a 50 and a 64 on a region score. So this school year, the one that just passed, 2022-2023, similarly to the school year of 2021-2022, our students, if they do not score a region's grade that helps their final grade, that score, that region's grade um, will not be factored in to their final average. And that is why we term this, and it, it's, it's termed that also by the media, as a no harms policy. So for this school year that just passed, and it extends all the way through August 2023, if a student does not score a grade that will help their average on the regions, that will not be counted in their final grade. Um, so I just wanted to put this information on there. The board accepted this resolution in June of 2023, similarly to the way they accepted the resolution back in 2022 uh, in June as well. So that is the end of my presentation. It's just to kind of um, recap what the grading policy originally was and um, what was put in place through August of 2023. Thank you, Alexa. Sure. And, and I just want to point out one more item. Much of what was put in place and continues at this point is because they have indicated that in some places, the 
instruction during the, co during the COVID period was not as effective as the in-person instruction that we have on a regular basis. And so they did not want to harm any students and for a period of time felt that they could accept those lower scores. That's correct. Okay. It was in response So I just to want that. to make that clear. Yes. This was absolutely as a result of um, many districts in New York State uh, having difficulty with the implementation of the um, virtual instruction. And in many districts, there were issues with connectivity and actually had not provided every student within the district with a device. That's right. Uh, we were very fortunate here. We were able to do that in a very short period of time, actually with a, within a two-week uh, turnaround period, began to distribute to all. So um, again, the state is saying it has felt that um, it gives a fair uh, playing field to all students that have gone to school but may not have sat for regents during the uh, COVID period. So thank you, sure, Alexa. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I think you have some questions though. Mm -hmm. Hi, thank you. Okay. I just, for myself, I need a little clarity. It kind of feels like we're talking about two different things. One, the way I'm understanding it is our grading policy, which incorporates the way that the regents is factored into the end grade, which could be separate from what the no harm policy was where people could, I don't remember what they were calling it, where you, um, the children between 55 and 64, that they could go get, they could appeal it. The the right. Appeals, right. So they're That's kind the of two different things. Am I understanding it right? That they're sort of two different, they're connected. They're connected. Yes. But they're like, is there something that we could look at? Are there districts that ever had the policy within their grading policy where they were using the 20, not using the 20% if it didn't, effect like that is how I understood do no harm was yes. that you so yeah. uh, um, it is a district uh, policy to create the grading policy and to decide how much the regions will factor in the grading policy and you could do a do no harm where for some students it would be 20% and for some students if it didn't affect them positively you could not include it or okay. like how does that work right. yes that that's correct it, um, it's a matter of coming up with not a no harm policy, but really looking at the percentage of weighting of a final exam or a regents exam. It's not an elimination of that exam calculated into the actual grade for the course. Can we find out what it looks like in other districts? It just seems do that. I'm going to tell you that probably a number of districts are going to be looking at their grade and grading policy in the next year. Um, some districts count the midterm grade. Some districts do not. Okay. So I think that's something that we will undergo as well as many other districts um, across Long Island and, and uh, honestly across the state. Um, as we move into the new school year. All okay. right. Yeah, I'd like to hear about that. Yeah. And so just to clarify, regardless of which grade is factored into the final grade, both the region score and the final will be on the report card, correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. So uh, the region scores are on the transcripts and on the report cards. Um, students are allowed to retake the regions and the highest score would be the one that would show up on the transcript as many times as they would like to retake it, they're allowed to retake it within their high school career, yes. But it will always show up. Mm -hmm. Related to the weighting of the regions in particular, what guidance or what is mandated by the state? If anything. New York State does not have a mandate to include the regions um, in the final grade. That is a district decision. But it does indicate that the regents grade is on the transcript. Yes, that's yeah, I correct. I understand that. So if it, whether or not it's weighted in, it's the actual number score is going to show up on the report card. Right. Okay. Any other questions, Leah? 
completely off topic. Can we turn these fans off? I No, no, no. I'm going to do it. I just want to make sure everybody's okay with it. Okay. Oh. We'll see. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No, not at all. And that is the superintendent's report for tonight. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Our student board member isn't here tonight, so we'll move on to our first public participation. Agenda items only. Um, three minutes. Any takers? Okay, let's move on. Instructional report. Based on the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, I ask the Board of Education to approve agenda items A, B, and C on their instructional report. Can I have a motion? Leah and Maureen, any questions? All in favor? Six. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, a motion is requested for the approval of agenda item eight, business affairs, V, operations one through seven. Can I get a motion? Um, Ann and Megan, any questions? Okay, all in favor? Six. I ask the board to approve personnel section 8A certified numbers 1 through 13 as amended. Can I get a motion? Lynn and Ann, any questions? All in favor? Six. Do you want me to announce? Sure. Um, at this point in time, I would like to announce that Th and thank the board for their approval of our new assistant superintendent for human resources. Welcome home, Andrew DiNapoli. Okay. Now back to business. <laughs> I ask the board to approve personnel section uh, 9B classified numbers one through four. Uh, Megan and Leah. Any questions? All in favor? Six. Okay. Um, any unfinished business? No. Okay. Our new business. We have a first reading and adoption of the policies. Do you, are you going yeah. to say anything? You want it? Uh, numbers 6700. Numbers 2160 and number 9102.1. Um, these are uh, conflict of interest, ethic, and uh, purchasing policies with the, uh, in order to bring them up to um, federal requirements. And that is with the addition of the word agent, not secret agent. I'm kidding. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or comments about this? Should we go ahead and vote? Mm -hmm. No, we're just. Okay. Can I get a motion? Maureen and Leah. Um, all any questions, comments? All in favor? Six. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any board comments? Uh, Leah, sorry. Um, I just want to thank our architect, um, John Grillo, for really just jump-starting on all of the projects that are going to get done over the, pa over, over the next couple of years. All of the crew, all the people that are here day and night working in the high school and, and the other buildings. Um, there was one more thing, and now it just slipped my mind. State approval. No, nope, that wasn't it. <laughs> Well, I do have to um, thank As I was Grillo. writing it down. 
along those lines too. Um, the approval process has gone very smoothly and we have received uh, state ed approval in record time on the projects um, so we can be assured uh, compliance with um, state regs and reimbursement of those funds. I remembered. There have been people that are, you know, approach us, board members, all the time when we're food shopping and whatnot and other places around town, and they ask, what's going on? What's going on in the buildings? What's happening? You know, we approve this bond. What's happening? And uh, there's a lot happening. So drive by the buildings. Take a look. Um, you probably can't get too close. But take a look and remember, everything is on the website. I think a lot of people forget that you can just, you have access to it on your phone, in your hand, all the time. Just go to the website, click on Find It Fast, Facilities and Capital Projects, and you get a nice little spreadsheet of when everything is getting done. So please go take a look at that and it'll answer a lot of your questions. But also not everything is necessarily visible from the outside. There are a lot of projects that are being done within the buildings. So when students come back, they'll see a big change, but not everything is going to be visible to everybody driving around, um, but work is being done. Okay. Victoria. There's also um, a PowerPoint. Yeah, please, the, please look at yeah. what? Closer. Oh. There's also a PowerPoint on the uh, website now that's updated weekly with pictures. So I know people like to see the before, the during, and the after pictures. Where is that? It's on the website. Lisa, I believe, posted the, um, the PowerPoint. Okay, okay and I'm going to look for it. At our first board meeting in September, mm -hmm. uh, we will then be providing uh, presentations with those photos um, and others that will, uh, there are actually three separate presentations. One will be the actual bond work. The other will be the progress of the energy performance contracts. And the third will be the work that's being done by our maintenance and uh, maintenance crew. Uh, so they have been working very hard as well on a number of projects. So um, please come to our first September board meeting or tune in and uh, we will be giving you an update then. We will give periodic updates at uh, future board meetings as well, okay? Any other comments? Okay. Um, so can I have a motion? To oh, public participation, our last public participation, sorry. Any takers? Okay, could I have a motion to adjourn? Anne and Megan, all in favor? Six. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.